right, so moving over to the reigning premiers in Collingwood. Again, very strong list. It's hard to argue against any name um, that makes a grand final, but adding in Lockie Schultz, big. Yeah, it's really just an improved list on, on what they had in the grand final. Um, yeah, they lose Taylor Adams, uh, they lose Jack Inovan, um, but Schultz is a great addition. They'll get Dan McStay back from that side. Um, and yeah, just starting off the back line, like Captain Darcy Moore had probably his best year. Um, you'd think from an individual perspective, just like on field, and also you know taking on the captaincy and, and leading him to a, a premiership was a huge effort. Nathan Murphy, um, again, going be- better to better to better each season. Um, hopefully all in the clear with those concussion battles um, from next year. And then, you know, Braden Maynard, uh, you know, he's an All-Australian player. Um, fierce, I think, you know, we kind of know what we're getting out of a Braden Maynard. And then Isaac Quayna, um, kind of a breakout season for him as that lockdown um, small defender. So those four in particular really lead that charge. You know, they've got some good um, depth options. Johnny Noble wasn't in the side at the end of the year. Talk, look at Jack Crisp, able to float back. Scott Pendlebury the same, Nick Dacos the same. Oleg Markov, certainly a, a best 23 player now after one year at the club. And then they kind of you know, added to their back line at the draft with Harry Dimitir and, and Terry Jath. So um, Dimitir is probably the, the more likely one if, if either of them are going to get a look, but you wouldn't think that they're you know, starting 23 uh, in a reigning premiership side. So yep. certainly help um, with some of their backline options there. You know, Are we going to be able to get a look at Charlie Dean uh, at some point over the next year? Um, you know, Billy Frampton's another one, obviously, that um will play significantly down back as that as that tall defender so um yeah once again quite a formidable back line no no real change and you can expect it's only going to get better next season um yeah midfield as mentioned they lose taylor adams um but i think that they've they're working to kind of fill that void quickly mm-hmm. enough through some of those ssp guys and even Demetia could be that similar inside midfielder if they wanted to use him that way but they've got tom mitchell uh, you know, both the day cost boys, Jordan DeGoey, um, he'll be yeah, real Brownlow chance heading into next season, you would think, as would uh, Nick Dacos. Uh, you know, Scott Pendlebury will still spend a bit more time through midfield, and that's kind of what Derek Hines spoke about after the draft is with kids like Jacob Ryan and Harvey Harrison and the two draftees that um, it'll kind of afford Nick Dacos and, and Pendles to be playing a bit further up the field in, in through midfield. Um, Finn McRae, there's probably a lot of pressure on him heading into this year. You know, former first-round pick, opportunities there with Taylor Adams out of the team. So um, hopefully he's playing you know, a bit, a bit more footy um, and adding to, I think, just a dozen career games over his uh, three seasons at the club. Pat Lipinski, um, you know, I, th- I think he was probably, a, if they were fully fit, he probably wasn't playing in the grand final. So he probably wants to kind of lock down um, that midfield role uh, early into next season, still side bottom will slot onto a wing, um, opposing Josh Dacos, but they'll have some, probably a look at Ed Allen at some point over mm-hmm. the next year. Craig McCray, a big fan of him uh, and what he was able to do at the VFL. So, uh, yeah, pretty you know, prolific midfield group and exactly why they were the difference makers uh, in the grand final. Uh, forwards, as mentioned before, Dan McStay, kind of the um, the spearhead again, but n- they don't really have that standout forward. Um, you know, you look at Brody Majacek, he's led their goal kicking in the last five or so seasons. Mm-hmm. Um, certainly goes unheralded at times uh, in that regard. And then, Jack- and then there's more forwards. Add Lockie Schultz to the likes of Bobby Hill, um, Jamie Elliott, Bo McCreary. That's that's going to be really tough for opposition to deal with. Assuming you'd assume all four play as the three premiership pies did with Ginevan in there as well. So um, that's going to be quite an interesting mix to see how all that unfolds. Um, you know, other tall targets, Mason Cox will, will roam down there with Darcy Cameron as kind of that ruck forward balance. Does Ash Johnson, you know, break in? Um, some good signs of preseason on Monday, it looked like. But um, yeah, he probably just wants to kind of um, you know, just be more than a, a fringe player and really wants to cement his place in the starting side. And then Reef McInnes, Josh Carmichael, some of these guys that will you know be more fringe players, but uh, again, should be getting a look um, at the top level. And then Will Hoskin Elliott, you know, member of the premiership side, best 23, but one that certainly you know doesn't have a spot cemented in mm-hmm. this 23 man side. And um, you know, he's a, a veteran now after being in the league for you know, over a decade. So um yeah, wants to still prove he he's, can play at that top level for sure. Yeah. Um, so speaking of the veterans, do you think this is like I've been we've been saying it for years, but is this finally the year that we start to see some of these veterans slow down? Like you got your side bonus, Pendlebury, how now that they've won a premiership, can you see them 
slowing down? Are there, um, like, are there spots in danger? I'll, like, I'll admit, I said this probably about side bottom a couple of years ago. Right. He's just proven me wrong. He's been absolutely fantastic for them. Um, I didn't think he was going to have that mm. ability to go up again. And when it looked like he might have been going down in that, you know, that 2021 season, the last two years, he's been absolutely fantastic. Pendles mm. is just, you know, just class. Yeah. Like, it doesn't look like he'll he'll be taking a step down any point soon. But you think, you know, next year with with him and Cybottom and how all off contract, it's going to be quite interesting to see mm-hmm. if any of them kind of play on into 2025. Um, you'd think not, but Pendles is really hard to tell. How's injuries probably going to slow him down a little bit after such a long time um, off. Um, but like I, like I said, I can't put anything through side bottom at the moment after what he's been able to do the last two yeah. years. So whose list spot there do you think is um, at most danger? Obviously, we've got Johnny Noble as a sub. Um, yeah, who's probably not we don't, cemented. Yes, yeah, so like Hoskinelli not in the in the twenty three to start. He probably would have been one um, if you were thinking that way. You know, I think you look at Pat Lipinski, um, you know, Mason, like what can they get out of Mason Cox and Darcy Cameron? Do they look to kind of switch that up at all? Um, other than that, you know, I, I, it's hard to see Oleg Markov taking a big step back, but he really wants to prove that you know this year was just a one-off. Mm-hmm. That um, he's a real key cog in the uh, Craig McRae system. Yep, absolutely. Yep, strong list for the Iranian premiers. So. Mm-hmm. 